Uh, please put your hands together for Jan Aral and Govan Chatak. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's so exciting to be here. Like, we've been following AdventureX for so many years now. And as you can see, our topic is hidden point and click jumps from Balkans and Eastern Europe. It was such a challenge that we have to come as two people. And without further ado, let's begin. Yeah, let's first, I guess, introduce ourselves. Yep. Sure. I'm General, the creative director of Cultic Games and also an instructor at Bacheshire University Gaming Lab. If you're planning to Google up my name, please add Cultic Games to the end, because otherwise, <laughs> the result you would get is, can oral sex be harmful? And I cannot help you with that. <laughs> Consult to a professional. Yeah, and also this is Givan, Givan Chatak. Uh, I'm the founder director of Bug Lab, and we, and we also we also we also we also work together with John at the University of Bacheshire. I, I'm the head of the department of uh, digital game design. And let's see what Cultic Games is up to. Yeah. Uh, our first game was a game called Stygian Reign of the Old Ones, which was essentially a Lovecraft and role playing game with some adventure elements involved. Our second game is Cats and the Other Lives, which tells the story of a broken family from the perspective of their house cat, Aspen. We define it as a minimalistic point-and-click adventure. And as uh, Baglip uh, is the center of the uh, indie game scene in Istanbul, it started uh, almost uh, 10 plus years ago uh, as a center of community, but during the years it evolved into a uh, into a hub of education and also a production and lastly incubation uh, uh, funded by the state government. And we are proudly also, we hosted Cultic Games for a, for a very long time and we uh, supported those games with our students and with also with our patient. Yeah. And um, so how did we approach yeah. this study? Yeah. This task? Yeah. Actually, our method was simple. Uh, we like, we make an um, extended search for adventure games uh, yeah, from the region we were aiming for. Uh, especially looking for uh, culturally dis uh, distinct themes and elements uh, so we can bring them under a new light. Yeah, we started with the countries that we already have contacts from. Oops. And, um, yep. Uh, and then the, the list got filtered down uh, with, the, with the ones we were able to obtain materials, got answers uh, to our interviews, etc. As for the timeline, we picked the golden years of adventure games with all those Sierra classics and LucasArts titles. Our motivation was to find out what's happening in the East while the West was the king of the hill. Most certainly, this is an ongoing research and we'd love to hear your feedback and recommendations when this is over, because like we are still working on it and we are still excited about this study. Yep. Um, in order to understand uh, the games from this region and also timeline, we need to consider the political and uh, social uh, conditions of these countries and of course the developers. Uh, you can imagine that it was a difficult time. Uh, you can't even reach the hardware to play games uh, and developing them was another story. Uh, so Do It Yourself was the king of that era, starting with text adventures and spreading the word in communities. Uh, early game developers found their own ways of hacking the Iron Curtain. And it was not just for fun, but also for imagining new worlds. Okay, let's go. Start, we are starting with Poland. Yuka Koppamaki. <laughs> To ja przepraszam. Best solution ever to a puzzle, eh? Okay, so we start with Poland and interestingly with not a game but a movie because the very first point and click title of Poland, which is AD 2044, is based on the dystopian Polish comedy Sex Misja. Developed by the Polish game design pioneer Roland Pantola, the game takes place in a matriarchal future society. Due to the Atari 8-bit computer's limitations, the mouse-centric point-and-click control scheme is replaced by joystick controls. Our next game, again by Pantola, is Klontwa, 
the curse. This time with Klonfa, Pantola works on an original fantasy story about desperate villagers and evil curses. Again developed for Atari 8-bit computer, Klontwa's most formidable aspect is to the upgrade to the third-person camera and animated main character when compared to the first-person gameplay of AD 2044. Yeah, okay. This one is a bit uh, tricky. Uh, Watchi Cemnoshchi, uh, Lord of the Darkness. All the hard names are on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll discuss it so later. Chance. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the third Atari 8-bit title of Pantola welcomes the return uh, to the first-person camera. Continues the story of Klatva and can easily be described as the most polished and evolved game among his Atari 8-bit trilogy. The soundtrack of composer uh, Lesek Holda enhances the experience, particularly in Lord of Darkness. AD 2044, the remake, after a three-year hiatus, Pantola returns to the game development scene with significant advancements, with the remake of his classic title, AD 2044. Not only he captures the zeitgeist of the global PC development scene with a Windows-compatible game, he also experiments with pre-rendered 3D environments and 3D cutscenes. With all the experience of his earlier titles and access to state-of-the-art 3D technology, it was impossible not to see another project by Mr. Pantola. Taking inspiration from the success of Myst and similar titles, Rea Face the Unknown deserves much praise for its elegant camera work, stunning environments, and mysterious science fiction story. Okay, <laughs> again a hard name. Okay, here we go again. Tayamnitsa uh, Statuetki, Mystery of the Statuettes. So, who would believe a holiday that uh, a holiday at the Azure Coast would create such an impact on the Polish game development scene affecting the next two decades? Two friends on vacation, Adrian Himeleans and, and Grzegorz Michowski, decided to use the photos they took to make a still to make a still image adventure game and Metropolis Software House was founded. We continue with Teen Agent, the second game from Metropolis. With Teen Agent, Adrian and Gregors jumps on the LucasArts train and go full point and click with third person camera, animated characters, colorful graphics and a streamlined control system which is pretty modern for its time. And here we come to the game that you have recently watched the short clip. It is Galador, the Prince and the Coward. And we witnessed the height of Metropolis software with Galador, uh, which can easily compete with titles like The Curse of Monkey Island with its charming style, high-res cartoonish graphics, and professional voiceovers. And if you're curious about what happened to these two friends, uh, like who went to the holiday at the Azure Coast. They are actually the pioneers of Polish in the scene. Gregor is now and still the head of 11-bit studios known for iconic titles such as This War of Mine and Frostpunk, while Adrian co-founded seminal Polish game studios and led titles like Painkiller and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Okay. We continue with an, another adventure game development team from the 90s, Art4. In their first title, Mentor, they told the story of a rock group of the same time. The, art, the artistic and design influences of the Godlin series can be felt in this early title. Second title of Art4 tells the story of a digitized creature called Harold, who is trying to hunt down a computer virus in a synthetic environment. It seems many years before cyberpunk, Polish developers were playing with the themes of cyberpunk. And Experiment Delphine, it stands as the most ambitious among Art Force adventure titles. It tells the story of time travel, alternative history, and evil Nazis. In addition to it being the most tonally consistent of the team's games, it utilizes the time travel concept as an actual feature of the game. Kaiko i Kokosh. 
Throughout the presentation, you'll be seeing the title Cultural Taste, uh, which we will use for, game, uh, for, ga for the games that have cultural elements authentic to their developer country. They are, they are our prize trophies uh, in the study, and we especially, we especially uh, enjoyed tracking down such games. Kaiko, Kaiko Ikokos started its life as a comic book by, uh, by the artist uh, Janus Krista before becoming an adventure game, and Janus worked on the visuals itself to retain the comic book style. There is a town in Poland called Wohotsk. Anybody <laughs> Polish here, maybe? Okay, great. Let's talk after the presentation then. <laughs> I'm curious about this one, really. By the way, I hope we are pronouncing the names correctly. <laughs> Wohotsk, is it correct? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well. So, in that particular town, um, there is an honorary title called Soltis, who is not very different from a village mayor. And Soltis are known for their jokes around Poland. And in the game Soltis, as you can guess, you control one. All the humor and gameplay of the game revolve, revolves around this particular cultural element. And we continue with Alphabet Shimiarchi. Remember Mystery of the Statuette, like the holiday game? The game that was born from a vacation? Alphabet Shimiarchi follows a similar do-it-yourself approach with its still photos, but this time in a horror setting. What made it particularly interesting for us was the photographs used in the game, which draw a sincere portrait of rural Polish areas, towns in the 90s. And we continue with Czechia. Nešahy na to! Zřejmě jste přehlédl mou uniformu, občane. OK. We begin our Czechia section with an unconventional title called Belegost, which combines the point-and-click control scheme of graphic adventures with written descriptions of text adventures to become a point-and-click text adventure. It is an unlicensed uh, Tolkien game which takes place in the Dwarven realm Better ghost. We continue with Svetak Bob, the first officially distributed video game of the then called Czech Republic. It is a first person point and click title which tells the story of a programmer whose plane crashes on a journey to make a deal with the legendary uh, game publisher firm Synosis. The people like, who were playing games from the Amiga era like, should remember the company. And the art consists of digitized illustrations, which is rare for its time. This game might seem familiar, <laughs> but it's not the game you think it is to be. It is called The Secret of the Donkey Island. The intention behind the development of the first commercial PC game was actually making a parody of a parody, because Monkey Island was a pirate parody, the Donkey Island is the parody of a parody. And if you look closely at the main character, it is almost exactly the same model of the guy brush from um, Lechak's Revenge, but with a mustache. Yeah. Okay, sorry about it. Selum Umi Asalum Notsi. Seven days, seven nights. Following their pirate adventure debut, uh, Ter Ternadon Software takes another beloved series as the role model uh, for this next adventure, Seven Days, Seven Nights. Just like in the um, Leisure Suit Larry series, we are controlling a character who is trying to win the hearts of young ladies in various but equally silly ways. Drachi Historia. Most of you probably heard a game development team called Amanita Design. You might play it Machinarium or Samaros or any other title uh, by the company. Amanita founder Jakub Dvorsky did not appear out of thin air and formed one of the most successful game studios in Czechia. He was a hardworking artist 
And Dragon History, this game, was the first project that he ever worked on. This colorful Dragon Adventure was also the first Czech dubbed game on CD. And we continue with Asmodeus Taemni Krai Rotanio. Jakub returns with this interesting blend of adventure and RPG, but only, not only as the lead artist, but also as the scriptwriter this time. When you look closely at the inhabitants of this fantasy world, you can observe that the characteristic naivety of the Amanita design characters are starting to take shape. Kuka. Cultural taste return. Guka is another dragon team fantasy adventure with a more serious tone. Directly based on the Czech novel, Guka a Dresselide by writer Vladorisa, the author himself also penned a script of this game adaptation. And here is the police game, Polda. Who would believe that a little game about police jokes can spawn seven points and click adventures in an East European country? After the success of the Czech version of the Police Academy movie, the video game medium also tried the subject matter with Polda. Add the voiceover talent of famous Czech comedian Ludek Zobota to the mix, and the rest is history. Orke Leto, Hot Summer. Comedians and adventure games must get along well in Czechia because in Orke Leto, another comedian, Zdenek Izar bestows his talent into a point-and-click title, but not for only the main character, all characters this time. The game tells the story of a teenager trying to save his dysfunctional family from cannibals. <laughs> Horkelito 2, the sequel, Hot Summer. Uh, Zdenek once again joins the uh, Maxon team for Horkelito 2. From the visuals to the overall tone of the game, Horkelito celebrates a lucky look kind of a setting and a comic book feeling this time. Our last Czech game might also be among the most unique and ambitious. Dreamland Final Solution merges broken sword like high res 2D graphics with 3D graphics to emphasize its virtual reality theme. Despite its novel concept and high production values, the game unfortunately turned out to be a financial disaster. And Austria. Ich sag's ja, die können jetzt schon fliegen. Das ist kein gutes Zeichen. We continue with Austria, and to our surprise, we have discovered that the very first graphic adventure from the country is a bank commercial. <laughs> yes, you heard it right. Army Goes for Gold is a point-and-click adventure which was designed to entertain, but also to teach the basics of the services you can get from Bank Austria. <laughs> and since you're here, the promotion continues. <laughs> Uh, Dark Claw provides another unique blend, point-and-click adventure and high simulation, add an authentic London setting to the mix, and we got a very interesting title in our hands. The game uses first-person for its adventure sequences while using top-down camera for the highest gameplay. Mutation of JB. Throughout the presentation, you might have realized the strong artistic effect of LucasArts adventures on many titles you have gone through. But Mutation of JB is one of those rare titles that really nailed it with its wacky art style. And Rant a Hero, the footage game. We closed Austria with a pretty big production for its time. In this humorous adventure, we portray an unemployed hero in a land that heroes are pretty abundant and there are no quests or jobs to undertake. The 3D art and animations are a real tour de force for its time. Hungry. Uh, 
Okay, we continue with Hungary, uh, a country where the development scene was not that advanced in the 90s, apart from a huge exception, which is the Novatrade company. Novatrade was like a licensed game factory which produced countless titles uh, from Disney games to entertainment. Storybook series uh, let kids affect their favorite stories by using paint tools. Museum Madness. We move on to another Novatrade title, this time an edu game in the form of a point and click adventure. Museum of Madness was designed to teach topics like pioneering scientists, natural history, physics through its puzzles. For better or for worse, this is our country. Welcome to Turkey. One of the first point and click titles from our country, also a well promoted one, was Detective Storm, which told the fairly standard story of a detective trying to find the mayor's lost daughter. The game consists of 3D backgrounds and 2D animated characters. Gerçeğin ötesinde, Beyond Reality. The second adventure title of Cartoon Animation Studios is a full motion video game in the, in the, in the, in the reign of Phantasmagoria, but a much less R-rated <laughs> version, of course. The compositing technique was a little underdeveloped for the time. Kelo olan, and let's share some cultural tastes from Turkey. Although another point and click title, this graphical adventure tells the story of a young character from Turkish mythology, Kelo olan, who is a reflection of the full archetype and depicted as a bald boy. Galata, although released in the same year with Detective Storm, Galata, named after the famous historical tower in Istanbul, stayed more hidden than cartoon's title. With superior animation, much more developed historical concepts and interesting puzzles, Galata deserves to be remembered. Piri, the explorer ship. Yeah, the last taste uh, is Piri, the explorer ship, a mist-like adventure uh, which, makes Piri which makes Piri race a source material, a world-famous sailor and cartographer from the Ottoman Empire. It is an edutainment project which accurately represents its source material. We continue with Greece. Because no matter how much I dislike you, you're the best there is. <laughs> Conspiracies. <laughs> Our only game from Greece is a FMV adventure project called Conspiracies, which has a certainly interesting cast of characters, portrayed by Greek actors and dubbed by American voice artists. In this dystopian sci-fi adventure, the game's lead designer portrays the villain. <laughs> Paul Sonic, The Ward, the only crocheting game of our study is the Ward, and out of an almost non-existent game development scene, Ward amazed us by its tense sci-fi atmosphere, moon setting, sound design, and 3D graphics, which can easily be compared to 3D titles of its time, li like The Longest Journey or Siberia. Okay, we, yeah, yeah, we continue with Slovakia. Uh, throughout the 80s and 90s, ZX Spectrum computers and their clones were big in Slovakia. And the enthusiasts who used those computers must have had a, a lot to say because they produced main text adventures almost in a do-it-yourself punk attitude uh, during those years. Although text adventures were generally outside of this study, we wanted to share these uh, gems with you that are now available in English from the Slovak Design Museum's website. And we continue with Twilight, Krajina Tieno. Our last game. Tieno. And 
those titles you just saw, they were all ZX Spectrum titles. And because of the effects of the Iron Curtain, like they didn't have much access to other hardware. So in 1995, with Twilight, Crane and Chiano, they continued to develop a game to Spectrum format, but this time a point and click title, a graphical adventure. A sci-fi game that smartly utilized the limited color palette of the spectrum to its advantage, and we were amazed by the technical prowess and the willpower behind it. Okay, so that was the last game. So our results for now. Well, most of these uh, pioneering titles triggered the modern game uh, development scene in their countries. Like in Amenita Design example or in 11-bit example, like those pioneers are still around, still strong and guiding newcomers. Yeah, they, just like you said, they paved the way for the big studios and titles. Uh, and also they are sometimes a way of social and political expression. Like in Slovakia, they might be a way of protest. And also in Czechia, definitely. And uh, most started by replicating their role models. Anki Island? Yeah. <laughs> then found their own language and style, for sure, like Polda, definitely. Or Saltis. Saltis. Uh, limited access to global markets due to the uh, lack of localization around those years. And uh, we can say that uh, voiceovers and dubbing changed things drastically, uh, like we bought locally and then globally, uh, for sure. Um, and using cultural themes did not have uh, uh, negative results for most games. Uh, on the contrary, uh, there are very accomplished examples. For example, Polda. I mean, there was no game that could spawn six other installments in our list. And that one was Polda, which was completely based on police jokes in Czech Republic. Okay. Like we said, this is an ongoing research, and, I, and, and, and we hope uh, we could, you could also contribute in, in the next ones. And, but, but, but for now, we'd like to thank uh, those people who, uh, you know, who really contributed to that study with interviews and such. Many thanks for them, and maybe a big applause for them. Thank you. And we thank you for your interest and patience. It was a little bit compressed. Thanks for staying with us in this last 30 minutes. Yeah, thank you. It was like a, a bit like a marathon. But uh, if you have any questions, I guess we are out of time. But one question. Let's do one question. Yeah. The golden question. Do we have, ah, yes, the nearest person. Brilliant. <laughs> Hello, first of all, thank you. And uh, how do you find all these images and this information, I mean, if the languages are gone, the, the platforms are gone, how do you find the people you thanked in the, for the interviews and how do you do it? Through connections and like through out of like courage that is at the border of stupidity. <laughs> we, we, like, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into when we started this research. And, you know, doors opened up new doors, and, you know, we, per we somehow persisted. First, we interviewed the candidates, and then, like, we got the information, and when we started digging, new titles appeared, we discussed, and we made the selection. I mean, no shortcut there. No shortcut there. Thank you very much, Chan and Kuvan. Thank you.